The Biden administration has yet to take office, but it already has a major problem on its hands. That problem is the US dollar. The greenback has declined over 13% since its March 2020. That's a significant decline to begin with. However, what's particularly concerning is the fact that the US dollar continues to plunge without ever staging a significant rally. Put another way, this decline is occurring with little if any breaks. Janet Yellen's nomination hearings, which begin today at 10 a.m., are sure to be the usual parade of partisan backslapping and gotchas. It is clear from prepared remarks which direction she is heading, go big. The former Fed head will tell the committee that the U.S. economy has been suffering from entrenched inequality, and that the administration's longer-term goal will be to create more prosperity for more people. Well before the virus infected a single American, we were living in a K-shaped economy, one where wealth built on wealth while working families fell further and further behind, Yellen will say, according to a text of her prepared remarks obtained by Bloomberg News. This is especially true for people of color. Which, irony of ironies, has been dramatically worsened by the very organization that she herself ran. The Fed is the number one source for wealth inequality. Ultra-low rates encourages debt and those who are not their own bank swallow the bait and take on huge debt whereas the wealthy pay as they go or use debt wisely. Wealthy people have seen their wealth surge due to ultra-low interest rates since bubbles were created in the two largest assets of wealth, equities and real estate. Hope those receiving fiat stimulus check realize they will never be able to afford a house at these inflated prices. If your economy is spiraling downward, is that a good sign or a bad sign? To me, that doesn't sound good at all, but if I am mistaken please tell me. I just want to make sure that I am not misinterpreting anything. Brian Dees, the man who will shortly be serving as the head of the National Economic Council, has publicly stated that our economy is spiraling downward at this moment. When I hear that, I picture a passenger airplane that completely loses control just before it crashes. But according to Dees, there is a solution. All we need to do is to pass the $1.9 trillion stimulus package that Joe Biden is proposing. A top economic advisor to President-elect Joe Biden warned the U.S. economy is spiraling downward and called for swift action to address vulnerabilities that the global pandemic has drawn into focus. Brian Dees, who will serve as director of Biden's National Economic Council, said Sunday that the incoming administration's $1.9 trillion spending plan would generate the kind of robust recovery we need. That sounds so good. All we have to do is press a button and we will be on our way to a robust recovery. But what about all of the trillions of dollars that we already spent on all of the previous stimulus packages? If they didn't fix the economy, why will this one do it? Perhaps they weren't big enough, and so why don't we make this next $119 trillion instead of just $1.9 trillion? If printing, borrowing and spending $1.9 trillion is good, surely $19 trillion would be so much better. Of course I am being facetious. The truth is that over the past year we have literally been committing national financial suicide. Just look at what our leaders have done to our money supply. We used to talk about hyperinflation in the United States in theoretical terms, but this is not a theoretical exercise any longer. I cannot even begin to express how horrifying this is, and now our politicians in Washington plan to add another $1.9 trillion to the fire. As a part of his stimulus package, Joe Biden also wants the federal minimum wage to be raised to $15 an hour. It also calls for a $15 federal minimum wage, from $7.25, higher taxes and more regulations. Those initiatives have already alienated some Republicans and drawn criticism that the proposals are far removed from an emergency effort to shake off the pandemic-related slowdown. But at the rate we are inflating our currency, that certainly won't be a livable wage for long. So I have an idea. Let's make the minimum wage $150 an hour. Surely that is a proposal that our socialist friends can really get behind. And when I use the term, socialist, I am referring to most of the politicians in Washington. If we force all of the, greedy, small businesses in America to pay their employees $150 an hour, then all of those workers will finally be able to live the lifestyles that they have always dreamed of living. But of course many of them also wouldn't have their jobs for much longer, because most of their employers would shortly go out of business. 
Unfortunately, the socialists in Washington don't understand how businesses actually operate. In fact, the vast majority of our politicians have never actually run a successful business. What they are good at is spending other people's money, and members of the squad are publicly calling for even larger survival checks that Biden is proposing. AOC, $2,000 means $2,000, $2,000 does not mean $1,400. Ayanna Presley, the people deserve, demand and require $2,000 recurring monthly survival checks. Ilhan Omar, the American people are struggling to make ends meet and need relief. We must immediately pass $2,000 survival checks. Rashida Tlaib, $1,400 less than $2,000 math teachers know this. That $600 is already in the clutches of landlords and bill collectors. Stop compromising the working class, and our most vulnerable neighbors. As I discussed yesterday, the cost of issuing $2,000, survival checks, a single time would be approximately $600 billion. If we do it on a continual basis, the cost per year will be more than $7 trillion. So where does Ayanna Presley suggest that we get an extra $7 trillion? Should we just print it into existence and make our transition to a banana republic complete? Sadly, now that we have opened Pandora's box the American people are going to be demanding more government checks on a regular basis from now on. Shane Warren once warned that we would get to a point where people would be in the streets demanding their entitlements, and if you doubt that we have arrived at that time just look at what protesters did to Nancy Pelosi's house. When people try to convince me that the United States is in danger of becoming a socialist country, someday, I just smile. The truth is that we already are a socialist country, and we have been for a long time. Even the stock market has become a rigged socialist game. Every time it starts to slip, the Federal Reserve steps in to bail out investors. According to one recent survey, the vast majority of millionaires believe that we are either in a stock market bubble, or that we are heading into one. 16% think we're fully in a bubble, 46% in somewhat of a bubble, 29% think the market is approaching one but most of them continue to pour more money into the market, because they know that the game has been rigged in their favor. However, what happens if things get so crazy that the Federal Reserve eventually loses all control? Many are convinced that this can never happen, and we shall see if they are correct. Meanwhile, the real economy continues to get even worse, our politicians continue to spend even more money, and social unrest continues to grow. America has entered a long national nightmare, and what most people don't realize is that this nightmare is still only in the very early stages. Debasing the currency has always ended in failure for 2,000 years. It never works, in the end. This was the Nomad Economist. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. And thanks for your valuable feedback. Stay safe and healthy friends.